10 Ideas for How You Can Work on the Habit of Attention This Summer Welcome to the Simply Charlotte Mason podcast. I'm Sonia Schaefer. When I was a girl, I took piano lessons. I would practice diligently during the school year, but my teacher always gave her students the summer off. So I got used to not practicing during the summer months. Later in high school, I switched to a different teacher, and she had a completely different mindset. She told me, why would you take the summer off? You have more time to practice during the summer months than any other time of the year because you don't have classes and homework competing for your time. Summer is the best season to make significant progress in your playing. If you're taking the summer off of schoolwork, you might be tempted to take the summer off of habit training, too. But may I suggest that summer might be a great season to make significant progress in habit training. Sometimes during the school year, we are so focused on the academics that the habits take second place. But think about it. If you have two or three months without schoolwork, you can use that time to focus intensely on habit training and see some real progress. Habits that you can get more securely instilled now will make the next school term run much smoother and easier. In fact, Charlotte Mason cautioned against relaxing the habits during school holidays and breaks. She said, The habits practiced in school and relaxed at home because it's holidays now, you know, do not really become habits of the life. School Education, page 107. So how can we make this summer, or any school break, an opportunity to focus on habit training? Well, first let me remind you of a foundational principle of habit training. One at a time. Focus on one habit at a time. It's so easy to overlook that principle if we feel like we're under time pressure. I only have a few weeks to fix this kid, and I can think of at least five habits off the top of my head that he needs to work on. Hold on. One at a time. Habit training is a marathon, not a sprint. You can make significant progress in a few weeks if you give it focused effort. But spreading that focus out over several areas will only dilute your effort. So pick one habit and give it the full force of your effort for at least six weeks. That's the way to get that habit up and running smoother. If you're not sure where to begin, I would recommend you start with the habit of attention. It really is foundational to all the other habits. Attention means turning the full gaze of your mind upon something. Now, most of us do that easily when something interests us, but being able to do that intentionally requires an act of the will first before it will ever become a habit. And that intentional full gaze of the mind is foundational because we have to pay attention to our thoughts and our actions and others' expectations in order to form other habits. For example, we won't even think about whether we're giving a task our best effort unless we're paying attention to that task and to ourselves. And those are probably the two habits that will give you the best return on your investment of time and effort this summer. When you get back into schoolwork, the habits of paying full attention and giving best effort will make a huge difference. Now let's get practical. Let's talk about how. Someone recently asked me if I had any tips for working on those two habits, full attention and best effort, over the summer. So I tried to brainstorm some possibilities that I'd like to share with you. In this episode, we'll focus on the habit of attention. Next time, we'll talk about some tips for working on the habit of best effort during the summer months. But remember, one at a time. Pick only one to focus on first. And then you can add the second one, keeping an eye on the one already in place. Let me give you two pieces of general advice to remember. First, If you have an older student, 
I would recommend that you sit down with him and have a brief discussion. Keep it short and to the point. Let him know that you want to work on those habits this summer, but one at a time. And very important, let him know the benefits of those habits. How having a habit of full attention will help him in his life. Second, take some time to brainstorm some appropriate consequences with a close friend or with your spouse. You'll feel much more confident going into this if you come up with some possibilities ahead of time and have them in your mind. They might not be a perfect fit when a situation arises, but those ideas can lead to other ideas in the moment that might be spot on. If your children are older, you might even let them help you brainstorm some possible appropriate consequences. So during this focused habit time, you'll want to keep those two tools close at hand, encouragement and consequences. Both are going to play a key role in motivating your children to keep working on the habit. All right, here are 10 ideas that came to my mind for focusing on the habit of attention this summer. Number one, motivate your child with a living example. In other words, include yourself in the habit training. And start with this question, am I paying attention to my child? When that child talks to you, do you set aside your phone or the potato peeler and look her in the eye? I love the definition of attention that says, attention is listening with the ears, eyes, and heart. And that's where it starts. None of us will be perfect at this, but it's good to check in regularly with our own hearts and make sure we're not asking our children to do something that we are not willing to do ourselves. It can be very powerful to say, let's work on this habit together. Tip number two, get face to face. If your child needs to work on applying attention when you're giving him directives, this will be a key. Try to set your child up for success in this area. Remember, the goal is not that when he says what, he has to deal with the consequences. No, the more often he ignores your first communication, the more that action is going to become his habit. So be proactive. Try to go back to the root of the issue and do what you can to make it easy for him to pay attention the first time you say something. That's the action that you want to become the habit. Pay attention the first time I say something. Repetition of that desired action is what will form the habit. So when you have to tell him something, make sure you are face to face. Don't take the lazy way out and yell from the other room or from the other end of the house. Get some of your steps in and go get eye contact before you start talking. Tip number three, keep your directives short. We talk about short lessons and how they can help a child learn this habit of paying full attention. Well, it's the same with your directives. If you have a child who tends to do only part of a directive, that might be a clue that your directive is too long for him right now. Just as you would scale back on the length of a reading or a lesson to begin with, do the same thing with your directives. Give short directives. The more often he can listen to the whole directive and pay attention to the whole thing, the more that action will become the habit. If it's a two-step instruction and it's too much for your child right now, then pare it down. Give one step. Once he's responded to that one, then give the next step, but keep it short. If needed, you could have your child repeat what he's to do, narrating in a sense so you both know that he's paying attention and he knows what you said. But start short in order to get that pay attention for the whole directive habit established well. Tip four, keep your expectations consistent. Some of the fun of summer is changing things up a bit when it comes to your daily schedule, and that's fine. A change of pace is good for us at times. 
Just make sure your child knows that even with a change in schedule, certain expectations remain constant. When the routine changes, in a child's mind, it begs the question, do the same rules still apply? It can be confusing if you require full attention one day, but not the next. So sure, go to that amusement park, but make sure you're requiring full attention when you give a directive there, too. You might be in different locations and different situations, but keep your requirements as consistent as possible when it comes to the habit that you're working on. This is a great opportunity for your child to see how the same habit can be applied in various settings. Tip number five, shadow as needed to keep on task. If you have a child who listens attentively to your directive and goes to do it, but often gets distracted along the way, there's another area of attentiveness that you could work on, paying full attention to the task at hand. You want to reinforce the habit of sustained attention until a task is finished. Keeping your directive short will help in this aspect, too, and something else that will help is your presence. The goal is to, as often as possible, keep your child's mind moving forward and focused on the task at hand. If you're actively working together, you'll be able to guide and model that behavior. So rather than send a child to do a task, you may want to go with him and do the task together in order to help him stay on track until it's finished. I know this will require more of your time, but keep in mind that this is temporary. The more often he reinforces that neuron path in his brain, pay attention for the whole task, the sooner that will become a habit. And the next tip will help you make the transition to you're not having to go with him. And that tip is gradually replace your presence with a timer. Now keep in mind your individual child. Some children find timers very helpful. Others find them very stressful. The key sometimes is whether that timer is set for what the child considers a realistic deadline in order to complete that task. To figure out that important time limit, Use a stopwatch a few times when you're working with your child on the task. Include him in that little exercise. It'll be good for him to see how long that task actually takes. Then once you know, and he knows, how long it should take realistically, if he gives sustained attention to the task, you can start weaning away your presence and setting the timer instead. The steps might look like this. We work together. And then you do the task, and I help a little and watch a little. Then you do the task, and I watch. You do the task with the timer, and I watch. You do the task with the timer, and I check in every couple of minutes. You do the task with the timer, and I check in only during the final minutes. You do the task with the timer, and I inspect your work. You see how you can make the transition gradually as it fits that child best. Tip number seven, let the consequences do the talking for you. In other words, if the child does not pay full attention, even with your efforts to make it easier for him with shorter directives and working together, if he replies with what? or he simply doesn't do what you say, don't repeat yourself. Every time you repeat a directive, you're reinforcing the habit of pay attention only the second time or third time I say something. That's not the habit you want to cultivate. So rather than repeat yourself, use one of the consequences that you have brainstormed. Let the consequence do the talking for you. It will be much more effective, and it will motivate your child to start paying attention the first time you say something. Consistency 
in applying consequences when attention's not given leads to consistency in giving attention the first time you speak. Tip number eight, limit electronic devices. The electronic devices in your home can be an addictive competitor for your attention and your child's attention. You've seen the vacant stares, the oblivion that can happen with electronic games, and that includes educational games. Even audiobooks can be a distraction from interacting attentively with the people around you. So don't allow electronic devices to sabotage your efforts at habit training for attention. Your children will be much more creative and active and more aware of what's going on around them, more attentive, if you limit their time on the electronics. Tip number nine. If your children are younger, you could practice with games. Many different games emphasize the importance of paying close attention in order to win. Very young children can play Simon Says. Elementary age children might enjoy Red Light, Green Light. And you can also play a little game called Listen First. Choose three single word actions that your child can do. For example, clap, jump, twirl. Start by giving just one command at a time and see if your child can pay attention and do what was said only one time. So clap, jump, twirl. Once he has mastered one command, try giving two commands together and see if your child can listen, remember both commands, and then do them in the correct order. For example, clap, jump. Twirl, clap. As your child grows in this game, you can add more actions and increase the number of commands that you give at one time. Keep it lighthearted, though. This is a game. It should be fun. And tip number 10. Read a great book together. The enjoyment that we share from listening to a book read aloud contributes to a helpful attention-building cycle. Megan Cox Gurdon, author of The Enchanted Hour, noticed this cycle as she watched a room full of fourth graders listening to a story that their librarian was reading to them. This cycle has huge ramifications for the habit of attention. She described the cycle like this. They learned that if they sat still, kept quiet, and paid attention, they could enjoy the story, even as their enjoyment of the story got them used to sitting still, keeping quiet, and paying attention. That's from The Enchanted Hour, The Miraculous Power of Reading Aloud in the Age of Distraction, page 121. If you want to work on the habit of paying attention, choose a great living book and read it aloud a little each day over the summer. Spend several weeks focused on that one habit, paying attention. You want to see progress, but uh, don't wait for perfection. That could be a very long wait. Remember, none of us is perfect. Once you see good progress in that habit of full attention, you can add in some practice on the habit of best effort if you want to tackle that also. Next time, I'll give you my tips for working on that habit of best effort over the summer. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe through iTunes, Facebook, YouTube, Google Play, Instagram, or your favorite podcast app so you don't miss an episode. You can also subscribe to the audio version of this podcast or read the blog post on our website at simplycharlottemason.com. All of those links will be in the notes. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.